This has been a long time coming and you know I'm sure it was in, in, in the late 80s when, when I was, my rally driving career um, was sort of winding down. You know I'd raced over some wonderful roads all around the world. And I always thought wow wouldn't it be great you know when, when I retire or whatever to have this just wonderful driveway. Then I got invited to the Goodwood Festival of Speed where we raced up the, the Lord March's driveway. And that is where our, our final part of our inspiration has come from. We, we nicknamed the, the property here Leadfoot Ranch. Our friends became sort of familiar with that name and so it only made sense that when we decided to host the event here that it became Leadfoot Festival. We were called Leadfoot by our friends when we were kids and growing up and proud of it, by the way. That's what we wanted to do, go fast. My dad used to tell us too, we all got Leadfoot. He used to think there was something wrong with our heads. I discovered about my love for speed when I was very young. I was about four years old and driving a go-kart. And uh, I understood that it was a passion for myself. When we jump on a vehicle, I like to push it all the way down and leave it down for as long as I can. It's just really fun. I just arrived at the Leadfoot Ranch. Welcome along to the inaugural Leadfoot Festival. The Leadfoot Festival of Speed, a recognition of top drivers and cars. It's a wonderful thing about this event, which is uh, being modeled by Rod on the Goodwood Festival of Speed, that you can wander around and look at cars of that caliber. This wonderful property is the front drive of Rod Mullen's house. It's not just about the cars, but also about the bikes and the history there. It's, it's remarkable. There's a lot of legends of motorsport here at uh, Hi Hey at Rod Millen's Leadfoot Festival this weekend. To chat to the drivers, they're all user friendly and they can tell you all about the fantastic machinery, the history and the pedigree. And uh, there's just so many things to see and do here. Millen was having a 60th birthday and he wanted a few of us boys to come down and uh, have a bit of a hill climb on his property. When I first got involved with Rod we were running this V8 Ford Escort here. We grabbed hold of this Escort and sunk the Oldsmobile V8 back in through the firewall. motors were designed in like the 60s, so it's nice and light, the motor's actually no heavier than what a 2 litre motor was. It took six months to build when we did go out 
that went straight away and started winning some events. We had some couple of spins in a rally at over 100 mile an hour, and I tell you what, you nearly pack your undies when you spin at 100 mile an hour. Cars well known. We used to see people clapping as we come sideways into the corner, and then you'd see them start running when we got close because they knew what was going to come out the rear end. Gravel like this. <laughs> So Fred Courtney in a 1950 Northland Special. This car actually won the first New Zealand Grand Prix at Ohakia in 1950. Throughout the entire country of New Zealand, there is something uh, in the air, the love of automobiles. It's really something. All the vehicles that we have here today, you know, you've just about got every form of motorsport covered, from ATVs through to stock cars. Well, I think once we'd already built um, you know, what I considered, you know, was a really demanding, testing, cool driveway. You know, now it was important to, to invite a, a, a broad um, collection of, of motorsports disciplines in, in terms of, you know, with the cars, the drivers, you know, guys that have just been on the track, guys that have just been in hill climbs or off-road, or even some of those cool, you know, vintage type, you know, race cars that that are, that are just in the hands of people now that they just love to show them and that. So, so I, wanted it, I wanted it all, so, so it was really important to, to have that cross section. big Audi Quattro that Andrew's built. It is an absolute handful. Well, yeah, here at Leadfoot, uh, someone said, well, do you have a favorite? Well, as the old story goes, one's too many and a hundred ain't enough. We'll take one of each. <laughs> This is the 1906 Grand Prix Derrick, which was run at Le Mans in 1906. Then it went to the United States and won the Vanderbilt Cup. It was the first time ever in that particular event that a checkered flag was used to finish a motor race. So we're talking 1906 here. That's a fabulous car, this one. The radiator on the Durat was just incredible. All brass, this V-shaped and it had like these single discs on it. Just every detail that went into that, you could never replicate that today. And the lady driving it, she was spectacular. She would sit at the start line, she would apologize to the guy behind her, and she'd play with a retard and all the smoke would belch in his face. It was spectacular, something you had to be there to see. After the First World War, the engine was taken out and put in a speedboat, and then the engine instead was used to power a generating unit in a Christchurch newspaper office, and it did that for 35 years. In 2006, the French government sponsored this car to go back to Le Mans and to be the centerpiece of the celebration um, of the Grand Prix. During the time that it was in France, it was uh, driven um, around central Paris at high speed with a gendarme escort, which was great fun. I think people love it because it's so unusual, so unique, and so unexpected in its performance.
Love the history of this car. Look at it go in the hands of Ann Thompson. Fabulous car. It was actually owned for a while by the late, great Malcolm Campbell, the legend that he was, and he ran it at that Brooklyn circuit in, uh, in England from 1910 to 1913. And it was the first of uh, Campbell's cars that he named Bluebird. For those of you who have just made it to uh, Leadfoot today, welcome along. It's going to be a wonderful day, culminating in a top 10 shootout this afternoon. Well, driving a stock car here is uh, it's a little bit tough. It's very tight corners here. It's a big, heavy car. But, uh, you know, it doesn't diminish the amount of fun I'm having. What you're looking for here is something that sounds great, looks great, and uh, I go by slow enough that everybody can get a really good look at it. <laughs> standing back, sitting on the grass and watching all these other guys have a great. The most impressive runs would have to come with the guys in the formula cars. Their eye line is probably about two or three feet off the ground surface. You know, so those blind crests that I was seeing in an off-road truck, eight feet off the ground or six feet off the ground, is a completely different perspective. whole bunch of classics that are here this weekend, a 1919 Lancia Kappa Sport. This car was restored in 2001, a beautiful old car. Uh, the car we brought here is a car that we actually ran through the 60s and 70s. It's the Rat Trap Fuel Altered. Reconstructed it in 95, and we race it all across the US and Canada. It's actually been to Goodwood twice, and we felt quite honored to be invited to this event because this is a very prestigious event and an opportunity to kind of uh, do an introduction to drag racing in a part of the world where maybe it's not quite as prevalent as it is uh, in the U.S. In our anxiousness to introduce drag racing, we were going to do a burnout. Unfortunately, the little front wheels just couldn't make the turn, and it wound up over the grass and ultimately into a stream on its wheels. What happened to the dragster? In the space of about 50 meters, you were probably up to about 100 mile an hour, were you? That's correct. It was probably right at 100 miles an hour. And then suddenly the car left the track over the bank. It went over one time and landed on its wheels. The safety crew was right there and uh, able to get out and everything was fine. Well, I gotta say, I think Rod and Shelly did such an amazing job of, you know, the bikes and the cars that they brought over. It's unbelievable. There's, there's motorcycles here that you'd be lucky to see one of them, you know, in a museum somewhere, and there's, there's 20 of them down there. So, yeah, it's, I would say it's probably like the ultimate garage that we're sitting above right now. <laughs> 